Minister. Uh, the next priority question is in the name of Deputy Maureen O'Sullivan, and I call on the Minister, number 57. Um, at, uh, yes, at uh, June 2013, there were 664 participants on uh, drug rehabilitation places in the uh, three Dublin divisions. Uh, this is 338 participants in Dublin Central, 130 participants in Dublin North, and 196 participants in Dublin South. Participants on drug rehabilitation places in the Dublin regions in June 2013, this June, uh, increased by 12 per cent compared to June 2012, when there were 595 participants on drug rehabilitation pla places. Progress has been made in a number of areas, in ensuring sustainability and the development of the drug rehabilitation places on community employment. That's a commitment I gave when I took over the community employment. Employment. Uh, an improved vacancy notification system for places for drug rehabilitation is now in place. It's been advised to all of the scheme sponsors. This aims to improve the spread of drawdown of places within Dublin and across the country and to incre increase the awareness of these opportunities. Priority was given in the application of the additional 2,000 places provided by the department in this year's budget. So if people have ideas around either extra places or innovative schemes, please talk to me and to the department officials. A referral process has been introduced to ensure appropriate referrals to the rehabilitation places. The DSP referral protocol, protocol has been agreed by the National Drugs Rehabilitation Committee and links with the emerging uh, care and the case management process. Uh, and what we're trying to do is have an interagency process. Earlier this year, a stakeholders group for drug rehabilitation schemes uh, was established by the uh, community employment unit in, my, in, in, in the department. And this advisory group acts as a consultative mechanism to assist the department in identifying improvements to the current CE drugs program and advising the department on achieving efficiencies and value for money in the delivery of the uh, CE drugs rehabilitation program. And we've held recently a uh, drugs awareness briefing workshop for people who work in the department, who are working with schemes, uh, with drug rehabilitation places. Thank you, and the workshop was delivered by key stakeholders from the statutory and community sectors, including uh, people who are and who were participants on schemes. Yeah. Thank you. And there's a lot that's positive in your, in your reply, Minister, so I do acknowledge that. Um, the financial review that your own department did um, when this was last October recognised the important role of the drug rehabilitation programmes and that it should be a dedicated strand of CE and that there would be a more coherent framework to ensure sustainability and development. And I think there's progress being made on that. But I'm just wondering about that, that framework. You know, how much consultation has there been with local bodies? So that would be the first thing. And the other one is that, okay, obviously the, the inner city that, that I, I know well, and I know these schemes in the inner city, I know the people who are on them, and I know uh, the recovery, the, the, the role that they pay, play in recovery, and that it's absolutely vital. Um, they offer very substantial learning paths, but they're in disarray now because of the changes that are being brought in to FOSS, to FETAC, to VEC, and to the, via the NQAI as well. Um, that previously accepted programmes are now not getting project accreditation and not being able to register. Thank you. So uh, can that process be speeded up for them that they can register and get the accreditation that they would have had in the past? Well, uh, first of all, I want to acknowledge uh, the deputy's uh, knowledge and expertise in this area and also the expertise of uh, the other uh, spokespeople who are here uh, in relation to different parts of Dublin City and indeed uh, in relation to other parts of the country. Um, essentially, we took over uh, the community employment January uh, one year ago. Traditionally, as you would know, 
Drug places, rehabilitation places, have actually been traditionally very difficult to fill. Uh, it's often difficult to fill even a thousand places. So I have to say, if uh, people like yourself uh, or other spokespeople in the House have ideas around this, either in Dublin or in the other towns and cities where there are problems, I'm certainly open to discuss that. We have set up, as I said, a uh, stakeholders and a uh, forum approach. Uh, we're also seeking to educate the officials uh, who deal with the case management of individuals. Now, there is one issue which I think anybody involved in this area, and I would have long knowledge myself of the area, which is that if somebody from a young age has had a serious addiction and a serious drug problem, the path to rehabilitation, as you know, can be quite slow and lengthy. And we've basically provided for that. So, and, and ultimately, for a lot of people to be successful is really, I think, the high point often is that they go back into education and Thank not you, simply into work, and they develop themselves over an extended period of time. So now that those schemes are within the department, there is greater capacity for progression for people, I would hope, over not just a two but up to a five year period to really rid themselves of, of being dominated and their families and the community being dominated and ravaged by drugs Thank you, and moving back Thank you. into education and you know getting qualifications. Thank you, one yeah, minute. yeah I, I mean it still comes back to, to those projects that are, are very viable, have a good reputation in working with people in recovery and if they're being slowed down on the accreditation process and even on the registering process. But the other point I would just make and I know CE scheme is countrywide but I have to make a point in terms of parts of Dublin Central where we have twice the national average of lone parents, there are pockets of unemployment of 60% and in certain areas even a little bit more than that. And CE is vital there. Now I know the double payments issue and that you know, is, another, is another matter, but just in, in terms of grappling with the issues that are there, some further incentive to get people on the schemes because apart from what the schemes are doing there's also the services that they're providing particularly in childcare and that's where is one where CE schemes can provide the training in childcare as well as the service but there is employment and we know it's happening with preschool and creches that there's going to be a need for more people with FETAC qualifications Thank you, so I think there's a real gap there that could be addressed. Margaret, the actor, final reply, Minister, Mr. Yes uh, and uh, well, I, if, if the deputy has queries about specific schemes perhaps you just bring them to my attention and if there's specific issues I'll look at them. Uh, in relation to the childcare, uh, what we're working at the, at the moment uh, is that all of the childcare places that are taken uh, would in fact lead, I would hope, to a FETAC level 5 or indeed six, because as you say, Deputy, uh, if you get to FETAC level five, that is a really serious qualification in terms of the attractiveness uh, of an individual uh, for the uh, employment opportunities that are available at that level. And that really would be the uh, hope that we would have a progressive structure that would have you know, the social contact, the rehabilitation experience, as you know, the HSE can provide therapeutic inputs that's separate to what the Department of Social Protection does. And then you have the movement uh, into education, personal development, and ultimately then perhaps qualification uh, in relation to areas where employment is a possibility. Thank you, Minister.